Time Podcast. It is 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, Team No Sleep, Sleep is for Suckers, all that. My daughter finally fell asleep because she's a little night owl, like her mom, so I'm finally free to do this. Hopefully she stays asleep. All right, y'all. So, this week is about to be fire because I got my notes on deck, all right? Um, thank you for everybody who tuned into the episode on motherhood. It was super all over the place and it took me like two times to record it because I tried to record it during the day. I probably won't be doing that anymore until my daughter gets on a schedule because that was a struggle. All right. And I don't, I mean, I am all over the place as with my personality type, but when I'm doing my podcast, I like to be to the point and direct. So you guys get what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, but if you listen to that episode, thank you. It's up there. My birth story, my journey into motherhood, um, I just put that up. But this week, I want to get into something different, all right? I got so many ideas since I've been spending time with God, and he's been giving me the downloads on the late night. But this one, I was not expecting, because I was like, all right, God, like, I want to do the podcast this week. What do you want me to talk about? I didn't know. And... I don't know, like when I get out the house, things just come to me. So this week's episode is called Roadkill. Hang on, I'm going to (laughs) explain. All right, so I just recently moved back to the tri-state area and I'm seeing dead squirrels everywhere. Like I can't even drive a mile without seeing like a bajillion dead squirrels. Like it's a little, it's scary, it's gory, it's a little sad like it's just crazy like I've never seen so many dead squirrels in my life like 2020 only 2020 that's the only explanation so whatever the other day I was driving around with my aunt and I was just pointing out all the squirrels to her and she was like oh you know it's because of corona because I don't know if you guys remember but um there was like news stories and stuff that when corona hit wildlife came back out and like the earth kind of healed itself a little bit or whatever however you want to say that so I'm like okay yeah that makes sense because I've never seen so many squirrels in my life but today I was driving around and um I was thinking about like all these squirrels again and the roadkill and um God showed me the real reasons why people hate roadkill so let's talk about it all right so roadkill definition of terms is critical y'all so every term that I'm gonna use that I want you guys to really like get I'm gonna give you a little definition on it um so I'm gonna use words but then I'm gonna give you I wanna I'm gonna give you how I want you to see it so think of roadkill as anything that's dead already that has no life so in your life roadkill might be that dead-end relationship your job junk food, distractions, TV, social media, whatever, y'all, all All right, anything that is not giving you life, anything that does not have life, and when I talk about life, I'm not talking literal, I'm talking about, like, anything that's not adding to you, anything that's taken away from you, that's what we're talking about here, like, stuff that's dead, and so I was just thinking, because, you know, some squirrels, it's obvious. Like, there's different stages to the roadkill game. Like, some squirrels, it's obvious they just got hit, and they're just lying there, and it is what it is. And then some squirrels have really been pulverized to the point where it's just, like, you don't really know what the roadkill was, but you see that it probably was a squirrel, given the amount of squirrels that's on the road dead these days. So I was just like, why do people even hit roadkill? And there's two reasons. So the first reason is that they're distracted. And the second reason is darkness. So let's go into this whole idea about being distracted, y'all. A distraction is anything that removes your focus from where it's supposed to be. And if you want to know what a distraction is, go back to my definition of roadkill. Like all those things are distracted. So what's the remedy for distraction? Get focused. Pay attention. All right. Not that is it's not rocket science, y'all. And um I wanted to tie in some scripture into this. So Ecclesiastes five sixteen. Make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Guys, if you're coming up against roadkill in your life, if you're coming up against dead things, get focused. 
all right? Like, we really don't have time for distractions. Time is fleeting. We're not getting any younger. The world is just getting crazier, or so it seems. Like, if you're really about your business, you don't have time to waste. So if you think that you're distracted, and if you think you're distracted, you probably are. Get focused. Pay attention. And that requires some discipline, but it's worth it. Because who wants to be out here hitting roadkill, all right? Not me. Not me, because nobody has time to clean out their tires. It's just gross. It's like, and then, ugh, it's just so much. Like, the smell over a, a, uh, over a period of time. I can't even talk. The, the, the slight, like, y'all, nobody has time for roadkill, okay? Get focused. Pay attention. Boom. All right, next point. Darkness. Darkness is the second reason that people hit roadkill. Like, they just can't see it. It, it happens. It is what it is. Um, and so there's two remedies for darkness. So one is glasses. All right. Wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. Wait, just, just stick with me. Anyways, because <laughs> obviously, like, if you wear glasses in the dark, it's still dark. But bear with me. Um, yeah. Like, sometimes you're going to need a new lens, a new perspective some clarity, a new view. And so that's really what I'm getting at. That's the cure for darkness. If you, if it's dark, like you need a new view, you need a new perspective, you need some clarity to clear all that up. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I've been wearing glasses since middle school. And I remember like I was in church and I couldn't see the words on the big screen because I went I grew up going to Christian Cultural Center like it's a pretty big screen (laughs) and I couldn't read the words and I was like mom I don't know what that says and she was like you can't see that and I was like no yeah your girl needed glasses and I'll never forget the first time I put glasses on I was like oh (laughs) a whole new world okay I was like this is how things are supposed to look like yeah, never going out, go, never going without glasses ever again in my entire life. And like to this day, if I don't have my glasses on or if I don't have my contacts in, like I just don't feel right. Like I feel like lost. Like I just don't want, I'm like, nobody talk to me. Nobody look at me because I don't, I can't see. I don't know what you're saying. Like I need to be able to see. It's that critical. Um, and sometimes you need that clarity because Clarity gives you a new perspective, and not only does clarity give you a new perspective, but clarity gives you the right perspective, and the right perspective is critical in life. You want to see things the right way because you can't be out here seeing things distorted. Like, you just, it's not lit, y'all. It's not going to take you to a good place. It's not a good look. (laughs) No pun intended. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's one remedy. Get some clarity. Get some glasses. The second remedy for darkness is light. And I feel like that one's self-explanatory. Like, I don't, it's, if you're listening to this podcast and you've understood me to this point, you should understand that if it's dark, turn on a light, period. I don't really know what else to add to that. And the verses that I wanted to tie into this, um, oh, I didn't give you guys any verses on perspective. It's okay. The verses that I wanted to give you guys that are related to light is John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Y'all, at the end of the day, light always wins, okay? And even if it's dark where you're at, the sun is always shining somewhere else. Even if it's cloudy, the sun is still behind it. There's always light. It's always light. And sometimes, maybe it's not the sun. Maybe it's a lamp. Maybe it's a flashlight. Maybe it's some Christmas lights. I don't know, but the point is, there's always light. There's always hope. Just gotta, sometimes you just gotta find it or you gotta wait for it. Um, And the second verse I want to give you guys is Psalms 1828, which says, You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns darkness into light. I don't really know what to add to that, but I just want to say that last part again. My God turns my darkness into light. Oh, it just hit me. All right. My God turns my darkness into light because everybody has a dark side. We all have dark, I don't know, darkness, a dark history, a dark past, a dark secret, however you want to call it. We all have an element of darkness to our lives. But just because that darkness is there, God's light is still bright enough to come light that thing up. And 
I mean, if you're, I don't know about you guys, but I've been in a dark place and I don't want to stay there. Like that light is critical. So yeah, if you guys want to stop dealing with roadkill, get some light. If you want to stop dealing with dead things in your life, get some light. If you want to stop dealing with, if you want some light, get some light, period. Um, yeah, so that was my little God download for this week's episode. I definitely have some more fire topics coming for you guys. And if you have anything that you want to hear me talk about, just hit me up. Like, I'm so open to feedback because I want to make sure that I'm talking about things that are relevant to everybody's lives. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening. If you guys tuned in on live, I'll be going live more, but probably on the late night until my daughter gets on a schedule. Also, since I've been off Instagram for a little bit, um, I did do some podcasts this year. I did some interviews, some fire interviews. So go check those out. I just switched my platform to Anchor. So... I know they've distributed my podcast to other platforms as well because I just had to switch it up and make sure it was easier to access as far as my podcast. So we're on Anchor, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify. Mm, There's more. I don't know. Check out the link in my bio on Instagram, which I'm back on if you didn't catch that already. And my handle is at gingernfit. And that's the letter N. Um, yeah. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I feel like I had something else to say, but I can't remember. Oh, you know what? Let me shout out some people. Shout out to Azemdi. He does my intro and my outro. That song is called Malaga, and it's fire. I don't know if I put the accent in the right place on that word, but whatever. Um, shout out Joda's Logos. Show Loge. All right. He just schooled me on how to pronounce his name. He did my new cover that I love. Um, mm, mm, mm. Yeah.